Um, we are so blessed mm. to be in this space. You all who have been watching, you know that we have been covering um, Chasing Reality's latest addition to their franchise, Chasing LA. And um, a lot of you have been watching the show. I'm glad you put your eyeballs on it because we talked to them um, almost on a weekly basis. Today, we have the Queen Bee, okay? <laughs> in the room with us on the Darren Green Show. And I'm talking about no, no one other than the Andre Hammonds. He's a Los Angeles-based fashion and lifestyle expert. He's had many television and media appearances under his belt. He's been on uh, The Look, All Stars, which aired last summer. Um, he's worked with um, Bravo TV's Dory Kimsley on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. He's worked with Dante Wilder. He's a heavyweight boxing champion. And even um, uh, Farrah Abraham from MTV's Teen Mom. Um, like I said, we're so excited to have him here with us today. Let's bring on the Andre Hammonds. Hello. Hi, guys. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Andre. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Well, welcome to the Darren Green Show. Um, what a time to be alive. So, okay. Right. Um, we've been trying to get you to the show for the past three weeks. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what that means? That means the girls are booked. Okay. They're working. Okay. Mm -hmm. busy. And, we, and we love to see it. So you took reality TV by storm for your very first season um, of Chasing LA. Um, you were probably, no, you were the most volatile member of the <laughs> Volatile? <laughs> That's the word I said. You were the most- Oh my volatile. goodness. You were the sure. most volatile member on the cast. And I say that because there was not an episode that went by that we didn't get to see um, who ran the girls, okay? It was very <laughs> Who's in charge of the girls? Andre, okay? So let's let's take it back a little bit. And I want you to give, give us uh, kind of a synopsis of who you are as a person before we go into the, you know, because she's a celebrity now, but where are you from and you know, what inspired you to become a fashion stylist? Um, originally, I'm from Tennessee. I like to just say Tennessee because I'm from a small town right outside of Memphis. And that's where I grew up and went to high school. You know, my humble beginnings, I guess you could say. And then I went to college and I studied in Nashville. And I lived for a good time in Nashville as well. Um, I moved to L.A. in 2014, somewhere in that time, 14, 15. Um, and when I was in Tennessee, I had been working like as a model. I had um, local agencies that represented me. So I did like a lot of print work and a lot of commercial um, kind of work based there. And I knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry to some capacity. I wasn't quite sure exactly what. I had a degree in fashion merchandising. I was working in retail. So I had kind of like a background already in fashion. Um, I moved to LA. I met a fashion stylist. And then I just kind of started the process of interning, shadowing, a assisting um, to the point then I started to get clients and stuff of my own. I had people I was working with different reality stars. So I kind of found myself being able to be in that behind the scenes space of reality and able to like pop in here and there. So I guess like a space like Chasing Reality, I had just been conditioning myself prior mm -hmm. to arriving here. Isn't that crazy how life yes. works? Like it really is for when you're prepared, those opportunities that come to you, you can you can literally seamlessly walk into them. Absolutely. Um, and unlike some of the other girls who I think when, oh, not girls, let me, me surprise me more. Unlike some of the other cast members, kind of like what Ian said last week when he was here, it's like, okay, well, you usually sell some lollipops, you know, before <laughs> you get on the show and not, mm -hmm. like, okay, well now let me try to sell some things. I, I, I take it that, um, it was very clear that you are not one of the coming soon type of girls. No. Um, so in 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 the process of becoming part of Chasing Rally, I asked everyone this question. How did you become affiliated with the show? Did you audition for the show or did were you a friend of someone who was like, hey, we got this project going on? Like, how did you get involved with this particular um, circle of friends? 
Um, it's kind of a combination of both. I didn't really know anybody particularly, but I did follow Q on Instagram. So I really came to know about the franchise through him. I was like, what? It was like, honestly, like right around the time of quarantine, like he was posting something and I was like, um, what is this, this show he talking about? So I ended up going and watching it or whatever. Around the same time I had just been on Claudia Jordan, um, out loud with Claudia Jordan on Fox Soul. And so he was like in town preparing to transition and move here. So he had reached out to me and that's when I started kind of first having the dialogues about possibly coming onto the show. Um, I kind of was always, I guess, slated to be a part of it in some capacity. I did go through some of the formalities of like having an interview or doing an application and stuff like that, but I kind of was just like already in the know. Oh, very good. Okay. So did you, have, did you play a role in like suggesting or recommending any of the other cast members um, that became uh, members of your, your crew while you were there? Actually, no. I really like, I, I talked to everybody. Um, well, I talked to Q in the beginning, Q and the, the other producer that was a part of the project. Um, but that was really about it. And they, you know, I got the call that they would like to invite me to be on the show. And then I met everybody for the first time that night at the table. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> So yeah, speaking of that first night, mm -hmm. now, we've had, we, like I said, we've had, I think about seven cast members on the show at this point. Um, talking about that first night of you all not really knowing each other. And you were part of the explosion between you and um King Pain. Right. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry, that's always gonna be the second my brain. <laughs> um so between you the 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 situation between you and King Pain kind of set the stage of what we were gonna be expecting uh, for the rest of the season. Is that something that you were were you is that something you were expecting that that night? Is were you expecting for yourself to be presented in that light? No. I didn't. I didn't expect it at all. I feel like it just kind of snowballed and became something like everything just started happening. Really, everything just started happening really, really fast. We were at the table, and of course, I definitely had, I would say I had a hand in, you know, throwing out a little bit of shade and mm -hmm. kind of looking for certain reactions. I think myself, I was probably guilty of it. I would say King Payne was guilty of it. Uh, but I think what happened was that we both came across somebody who was ready to do it, you know what I'm saying? So then once that kind of was in play, it was like, okay, now it's happening. Um, A lot of things, a lot of little sideline stuff was happening to kind of like add fuel to it. And then people did start building relationships. We did start hanging out off, outside of the cameras. So it, it really did. I think what people kind of maybe perceive is like, oh, it was forced and they wasn't, they had never really got to know each other. It was a lot of hanging out going on. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about obviously, D Hawkins and Jeremy had been hanging out myself and you know, so it was a lot of hanging out going on amongst the group, but it just wasn't always captured. Okay. So, so with that, um, I think I've stated it on this, on the show before, after the, like maybe the first couple of episodes. <laughs> Tell you my dog's an attention whore. No. <laughs> so there was, a, that's, there was uh, something that happened on that show, on that episode that was very, off-putting to me. I am a fan of chasing the chasing reality brand, chasing Dallas, chasing Atlanta, um, all the things. I watched the lives afterwards. One of your cast members, confessional, mm -hmm. where you know he was like, "Y'all both dark, y'all both ugly, y'all both this." You know, uh, I think that was Quan the poet. Mm -hmm. It was it, it struck me. Um, in a way, outside of some of the transphobic things that happened, and I know that you guys are probably exhausted about talking about that. Um, <laughs> when, was it Hershey? I think when Hershey came on the show, he explained to us that Quan's expression of that in the confessional, no, oh, Q actually mm -hmm. said, Quan's confessional, um, confessional, or him saying that in the confessional, was actually based off of things that you all were saying to each other. So now that we have one of you here, is that true? Are those the things that you all were saying to each other at the table that, you know, you black or you dark or you ugly and things mm -hmm. like that? No, that's not true. And you, I think what happened was we were making some very, we were taking some deep digs at each other. And I think what people were essentially were saying were that we were both saying very nasty things. I think what happens is, I don't know if they get a little bit of amnesia, confusion, they can't <laughs> particularly recall. So then when they go and say it outwardly, they make a few missteps, which is totally fine. But I want to be clear. I never said it. And I feel like if that footage exists, I would just say, 
show it. Right. I would love to see it. <laughs> like, I would love to see it because mm -hmm. I have no problem with if I said that to like acknowledge it, but to be quite clear and transparent with you, as I have stated in many other interviews, growing up at my complexion, do you think I haven't heard those types of slurs before? Right. So I know what my relationship and my experience is. So I wouldn't, that's not something that I would outwardly say. Now I might call you fat. I might call you ugly. I might say your head nappy. I might say your mama is a trick, like whatever. But mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily going to say that. You get what I'm saying? So I think what happened is I might have said some egregious things. However, that wasn't one of them. Okay. Well, thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, so moving on through throughout the season, I was looking and hoping, and I said this to, to Jayla as well when she came, is I was waiting, I was looking forward to seeing resolution to a lot of the, the, the issues that, that came up. Um, but mm -hmm. it did appear. Oh, excuse me. It did appear that every episode um, you were caught in drama. It just kept. It kept, like you said, it, not just snowballing that night, that first night. It snowballed throughout the season. Throughout the season, where, yeah, yeah. Where it just it seemed as if um, it seemed as if you kind of started being the role of like the bully, mm -hmm. and I think it was more so because you were you were highly reactive. Mm -hmm. You were reactive, but in those moments because you come off so aggressive um what i was what i was watching i just felt like okay well i don't know if he's projecting or if he's reacting to something else that's happening here in within the group something that wasn't seen or or something shown wasn't seen or something that wasn't said but we were looking and hoping for resolution for you between you and king pain now i know we have, we have we have a couple more parts of the reunion to, um but but Resolution between you and Jayla, um, just making sure there was clarity. What is the issue with you and King Payne? I feel like there was a competition for who was going to be the queen, be in the room. I know he's, you know, he wears his crown and his bubble jackets or whatever. But what was the what is the the gist of it? Because even now, watching the reunion or watching the finale, rewatching the season, it's still not clear to me. What is the issue between the two of you? I think in terms of like the show and I guess maybe what you guys saw, and especially from my perspective, I didn't have a great issue with King Payne. There's really only two situations where we kind of had an exchange and that was on the first night and then at the Love Hate Party. I think the obvious thing was the first night that, you know, we had just got off to the bad start. I made the Missy Elliott joke. Um, he made the Akon thing. We had discussed things and kind of like decided to move forward, but we hadn't done it on camera. So I think by the time that we got to the Love Hate Mixer, I was a little off put just at his overall like energy and disposition and how he showed up to the event. So to me, when he came, and I do understand, like, when he came in, he heard the Missy Elliott song playing. He probably thought it was some type of shade. But I also feel like there was a point where he just wasn't really even willing to accept the apology or even hear what I was trying to say. And that's mm -hmm. where my frustration stemmed from. I was just like, okay, like, we can't keep going around this same argument over and over again. And we haven't even gotten the opportunity to get to know each other. So that's kind of where I was at with the whole thing. But then I think what happens is outside of the show, because now you be watching the show air. So obviously everything is airing now. Mind you, the first night was in October. This is July. So that shit was like nine months ago. And you're constantly talking about it. At this point, again, you know the girls are forgetful. So they can't really recall how it went down. So now you out doing these interviews, telling the story wrong, spreading lies, making false narratives, and just talking too damn much. And now we got issues based off of the things that you are saying outside of the show so then by the time we see each other at the reunion what started off as oh this really ain't no big thing has again snowballed into something because all of these other factors that now contribute to it all mm. okay so that, that is definitely understandable so another piece um is when you're in reality tv and you're put on a cast of people that you really didn't know before you started working together you have to deal with a lot of different personalities and you come across as a person that has a type a personality like you're the, you're an alpha in the room right so do you feel that there were moments looking back where um where you could have handled things a little differently um and i'm not i'm i always say this too because i have an alpha personality a, a type personality as well mm -hmm. um, and when I was younger, I was I was reactive to a lot of things. As I've gotten older, 
um, and more into my brand and making my money and all those things, I realized like sometimes I would rather let you be the clown by yourself and just mm-hmm. and just be a viewer of your circus. So, so were there times uh, while you were taping that you feel that you could have just watched the circus and not been one of the clowns? Well, I don't think I was a clown, so I do want to say that um, in no circus. In or out, I not, wasn't a clown. Not, 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 I know, but I just want to. That all a whoa. Not a clown, but like being, <laughs> like being engaging in in that way right. That being started. a part of the fray, getting right. into the fray. I don't regret getting into the fray because the reality of it is, we are making a show. That's mm-hmm. just really it. And I think I am a type A personality, but I also think I was surrounded by nine other type A personalities. Maybe I would say maybe Hershey is the type B personality, but for the most part, outside of Hershey, everybody got in the fray. So like, and so my hands, I don't feel are any dirtier than anybody else's. What I can say is I think because I was definitely involved in a lot of it, um, what you saw was me interacting in a space where number one i was definitely had walls up i was not the most comfortable and you don't know what to expect and when things start to take a turn like it just for instance the drink situation there is no world that i can imagine on or off screen that i would have handled that any differently so i'm not going to sit here i'm not going to go into an interview i'm not going to stand in my green screen and pretend like um especially for a the viewers that i am beneath making a mistake Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that everything that I did was accurate, but throwing a drink in my face, that's crossing the line. So from that point, there's nothing good that can that can come from this, especially if the party who did it is not even willing to acknowledge that they did something wrong. And the group is has this wavering standard of what's right and what's wrong. The okay, so so what do you mean by the group has this wavering standard? Who made well, as we saw on the finale. When I Mm -hmm. got upset and stormed out, the whole conversation was that I should apologize to Jayla, essentially, and apologize to the group. Um, Nobody was taking accountability that they showed up with attitudes, ready to engage one another negatively, i.e. Quan, i.e. Jeremy, i.e. King Payne. Everybody came with these negative energies, Fran and Alicia. Everybody Mm -hmm. came to get with each other. So then we cannot be delusional and act like when I got upset that it just came out of the clear blue sky. Because people right. showed up with attitudes, they showed up disrespectful. So that's what I mean when I say wavering standard. I am not any more guilty than anybody else in this party. So the right. conversation cannot be, Andre, you did X, Y, and Z. It has to be, you know what? Well, this happened, and I played this role, and I feel like you did this. So let me ask you this. So I, I, I report you as the queen bee of the group, because I feel like that's the while watching the season, you give very much Nini. I run the girls. Like, <laughs> I, I, what's, what is the, uh, the, little, the little girl that has a meme when she was in timeout? Like, I run this classroom. Like, you, you bring that kind of that kind of energy to the group. Whether it's mm-hmm. good or bad, you know, it's great for mm-hmm. television. Um, I felt like in that moment, this is just me as a viewer, as, as a fan of the mm-hmm. show, I looked at that intervention where they were trying to get you to apologize to Jayla, right? Mm-hmm. Or to say, you know what? If I said something or that, for whatever reason, because you can only take comedy for yourself, regardless mm-hmm. of anybody else who's doing whatever they're doing, I apologize to you if what I did or said caused that type of reaction out of you. I don't regret what I said to you. I don't mm-hmm. apologize for that, but I apologize if I had that kind of power over you. And I'll make I'll be more cop cognizant to not be in that space with you again. I feel like there was a a space being presented to you of all mm-hmm. the all the shit that has happened during the season. With you being one of the people that was in one of the very first altercations in mm-hmm. the season, with you in the second episode when y'all did y'all with there being a moment of vulnerability for you where you were like, you know what, I'm working on myself and just trying to like so at that moment, you capture yeah. it. It's like, oh, shit, we're about to watch Andre grow. Now, I will say this. A lot of things happened over the season, and it got like, okay, well, they're just going to fight every episode. But there were a few members of the cast where you all hooked us, and we kind of were like, we're actually watching. Because that's what happens yeah. with TV. We're watching the season. Right. And we grow with you. I feel like in that moment, in the finale, 
that was the moment that was being graced to you to you me about to have a kind of sort of a redeeming moment for you to for you yeah. for you to be the person to say you know what because I'm I'm out here living my best life I'm getting mm-hmm. books I'm making my I'm trying I'm trying to show the girls how to live you know let me let me step into this space that wasn't happening for King Payne or any other girls who were basically like B cast because half of them I don't even know what they do. They don't really, you know, they didn't really offer anything but mess. So it's like, we know that you're working. We know that you are building a brand. We see you doing a commercial. We see that you are actually chasing your dreams. And we're also seeing that when it comes to this particular group, you're having a hard time establishing yourself as the leader of it. That is what, I, when I watch it, I see you in that space. I see you in that space because that's part of your personality. So when that, op- that opportunity presented itself for you to be the leader, and if you watch it back, they were standing, they were all coalescing around you. Mm-hmm. Trying to encourage you to be the leader in that moment. Redeeming from the love and hate mixer, all those things. Your reaction to it, your reaction to it um, was very telling to me that you mm-hmm. may not be ready for that space. How, since then, since watching it back, what would you have changed about that moment? If you could change anything, I know you say you don't regret anything, but what could you change or what do you feel, what could have been done that would have encouraged you more to take up that particular mantle in that situation? Well, let's, this is the thing. And I, so at that particular time, we maybe were two and a half weeks out from the Love Hate Mixer. So it wasn't like this great deal of time had occurred. Um, and also, again, I believe that there's a moment when things happen that we can move forward. And then there's a moment where we start to further things. And I think that what happened was leading up to um, the finale scene. I felt like there were a furtherance. It was the Instagram posts and, you know, videos of K. Michelle having a drink thrown in her face, you know, directed towards me. So I feel like things mm. like that don't set the tone for me to walk into a situation and to take the high road. At that point, I feel like now I have to meet you where you are, so to speak. I don't know that I would change anything because just at that time, I was not in that space. What I can say is when you guys watch the reunion, I think you will get a different perspective and a different version of the conversation that could have been had at that moment. But at that time, I wasn't ready, and it's just what it is. Very good. I'll just ask, the only reason I presented the question that way is because hopefully when you guys come back for season two, um, what we'll be expecting is, regardless of what happens at the reunion, is that we're going to be expecting to see a more elevated um a version of andre you know what i mean absolutely so, um and even though it's great for reality tv i am no imani van zat but there is right, <laughs> this, right, but there is a there's a there is a level of social responsibility that we have as queer creatives when we do take up a space on these platforms to kind mm-hmm. of and i to to really show what life is like for us. Like, to be honest, right. like, being in the scene, like sometimes there's some catty shit that happens. And sometimes yeah. you really do have to meet people where they are and remind them of why you occupy the space that you're occupying. So I totally get that. Um, but I also think that when you, when you have arrived to a certain level or to a certain space, when you're looking for the future or looking for further elevation, there's something that clicks in you that makes you react to things differently than you would Mm-hmm. You got there, and so absolutely you, as you all were taping, you were one of those people. I was actually excited to see, like, oh, this is not going. I said, how he started is not going to be how he finished, because mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was watching how you were working, I was watching on Instagram, like how he's how he finishes is not going to be how he ended, and you were going to be one of the success stories of the season. So just going into season two, I'm just saying mm-hmm. as a fan, right? But you know, it's funny because. I think you're going to get that moment and because we're not done yet. You're not we're done not yet. done until the reunion. To the, reu- to the last part of the reunion is aired and done. We're not done. You see? Mm-hmm. And so that's why I feel okay. I understand what people see. Maybe you didn't get what you would have wanted from me when you wanted to get it, but I think you're still going to get that from me. And I think that um, during the season, I just I wasn't necessarily in that space, but in going forward, I mean, obviously I watch the show just like everybody else. I don't get to see it before everybody else. So I have a bigger picture now to reference and towards. But in those moments, 
I was just as active a participant as anybody else, you know, and that doesn't mean that it was right or it's wrong. But the good thing about reality TV is it's it's made for redemption. You know, yeah. it's made for people to see you make mistakes and for them to have their um, viewpoint and their stance on it and for you to hopefully in the picture be able to redeem yourself. And because I'm aware of that, it, I'm going to redeem myself. Good. That's what I like to hear. I like to hear that. I'm glad. Um, see, you get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you get it. Um, so let's switch the pace. What was one of your favorite moments um, while taping Chasing Reality or Chasing LA? What was one of your favorite moments? We had a lot of fun. Like when we were when we weren't like going crazy, like we were having a lot of fun. I think for me the most fun or the thing that I was the most excited to share was when I shot the commercial for my brand. Um, because my brand is still a new brand, shop him. We're only like a little bit over a year old. Um, but making that milestone from like going to produce photo content to a full on commercial. Like we shot on a red camera, which is like the highest grade camera that you can shoot on. Renting out a okay. studio space, having a set designer, <laughs> having grip guys, having a full crew, you know what I'm saying? And having my product there, booking models from Wilhelmina. Like that was a big proud yeah. moment. And so I think, and I think what happens with me in terms of the way that the viewers see me, all the things that I have done for myself in my space of my career, my brand, I fought tooth and nail to get it. It was in a situation where somebody was like, oh, you know, here you go. Here's this opportunity. I had to fight. I had to prove myself. I had to shout who Andre was so they could get it and it would click in their brain. And then it was like, oh, dang, okay, I see who Andre is. So I think because of that, that's probably how I lead in most situations. And what I've learned is, Obviously, every situation is not appropriate. My style of communication sometimes is not always appropriate. Um, I'm aware of it, but now I've never seen myself outwardly like this. Every time I've been on TV or especially like in reality, it was in a professional capacity. When I was on Housewives, I was styling. When I was on the Look All Stars, I was competing. When I was on Claudia Jordan, I was the expert. So this was the first time of me just being Andre. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, also, I, I asked this to Jeremy also because he's another one that has does a lot of other things as well. Um, do you feel like the show, are you worried about how the show uh, well, affects your image? Well, yeah, in the brand. Not particularly, and I'll tell you why, because... I mean, this space is about hyper drama. We are essentially parallel to a love and hip hop. So, you know, if you see somebody like a Tammy Roman or a Jocelyn, that people have done these wild things, and not to say that that's justified, but you can still move forward. People mm -hmm. will buy into your brand as long as you have a well-established brand um, for them to buy into. Andre was an entity prior to Chasing LA. So Andre the entity could come through and navigate Chasing, how, Chasing LA however and still be an entity afterwards. It hasn't stopped me from working. I haven't stopped getting booked. I haven't stopped doing wardrobe. Sometimes people have seen the content I worked on and they were like, oh my gosh, we love the show. It's wild. Like I've never seen this, this space, this side of you, but they know I can still get the job done. Mm -hmm. And I think the perception is that these platforms can break will break you i mean they may have the power to but the general viewership are not the people that are offering me the jobs so how can okay. they stop what i got going on period okay all right so now that you're a reality tv star outside of more bookings what has changed for you, like in your life? What has changed since taping Chasing Reality or Chasing LA? I would say, honestly, I'm a lot more of a recluse now. Um, I don't, <laughs> I'm like a little bit more of a recluse just because, like, I feel like being in this space, people do have strong opinions. It's, I probably only stepped out like two or three times since the show has been airing or whatever. And I was kind of that way before, but I'm probably like a lot more like of a recluse now. Just sometimes like, I don't want to necessarily have to go in to have conversations with somebody because you do, the like, you know, in LA, if you go out to West Hollywood, like those people are the, the people that watch it the most. And of course right. they want to come and they want to talk about it. And this stuff is encompassing. You shoot for six, you know, six months, then it air for three months, and then you might have some time off. And if we get a season two, then you bet edit back, again. Back, and in the meantime, you're doing interviews. You still have to promote the show. You still have to do whatever you. I'm a business owner. I still have to run my business. I do costume, just like you know. what I'm saying I still have so many. So this it becomes very like 
It's like a vacuum. Yes, right. it's like a vacuum. And then you add the social media element, you know, be it good or bad, the comments, people DMing you, like, and don't dare go to the comment section. Like, Ugh. you're done. <laughs> right. Well, you seem like you're handling it well. I mean, you're the boss, and you seem like you're, all, you're still going to be handling your business. So I don't even want to ask you what one of your, what, your, what you feel is your worst moment uh, on camera, but... I will ask you um, the same question that we asked everybody else. Now, after watching the last episode, well, the, the first part of the reunion, you kind of volunteered this without having to be asked. But if there were a season two, which cast members do you feel would serve best uh, as viewers? I'm going to phrase it that way. <laughs> Let me say this. My worst moment, I would say, I, and I'm going to answer, I know you didn't officially ask, but I'm just going to tell you because I literally just thought about this last night. I think my worst moment that I just hated seeing myself was probably the situation with Alicia. I just did not like to see myself that way. Obviously, nobody wanted to you know, look at themselves, be so angry. Um, physically, I did not feel like it was an attractive look for me. And overall, as a brand and an entity, I don't feel like it was an attractive look. Um, so the that would pull the knife. Yeah, when she pulled the knife, yeah. Um, you look like you were young bruised by that time too, as well. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> like, I might have been drunk bruised by this time, like because that was the funnest day I would say ever. Because obviously, you know, I'm like literally outside. Like I know that that part was nasty, but we have been having so much fun and that's what i'm telling you like we have a lot of fun together because we have been at d hawkins house earlier in the day where he was getting the booty suction and we were drinking champagne and eating food and having fun and then we went that was all the same day exactly oh, wow. and then so the thing was and i wasn't going to go to the finale because Honestly, emotionally, I didn't feel ready. It was, again, weeks after, I still had a lot of raw emotions, a lot of anger and hostility about the situation. So I wasn't really in a space where I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the finale taping. I had actually already told Q that I wasn't coming. Nope. But what happened was, um, obviously, I have a relationship with Mr. Ray um, and... He, I knew that he was going to be at the tape and they wanted me to come and be able to have a moment with him on camera because he was a friend of mine already. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go, which was probably not the best decision. Then we get drunk boots. <laughs> <laughs> the group is trying to have an intervention with me and Jayla having a good time. Like all of that was just a recipe <laughs> for disaster. So I hated to see myself in their way, but it's just how the shit shook out. I wanted to ask about that too because I, because yeah, at well, first that was a funny moment during the show. It was a <laughs> moment because <laughs> she's having fun. I'm like, was was there a part edited out, or was that that was just all? No, that was really my statement <laughs> that she was having fun. Like you just so think about it in this way. Mm -hmm. It was two and a half weeks ago that Jayla threw the drink in my face. They just had the conversation with me, and I storm outside, and the first person I see is Jayla. Okay. Mm. I'm crying in anguish and she outside laughing and taking pictures. And I'm like, oh, am dang. I in the fucking twilight zone? Like, how are we you thought everything was time? resolved? Cause the way that the way that everything was like move maneuvered, we felt everything was resolved. I'm like, okay, they about to go to the next scene or whatever. Everything looks seemed to be okay. And then mm -hmm. that I was wow. Okay. So And that's really how it happened. Like when I was outside and everybody was outside. Party was over. I didn't know that though because I had I was outside and I was outside for like fifteen to twenty minutes. I ain't gonna lie, I was ranting, raving, screaming, hollering, cussing because I was mad. They was like, "Well, let's just go back in here and finish out." You know what I'm saying? But by the time I got up there, everybody was coming outside, and the first person I saw was Jayla, and she was mm. taking pictures at the little having fun, <laughs> and the fun <laughs> triggered me. Having big fun, you're out there having big fun, big fun, <laughs> and I'm big mad. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Oh my goodness! Okay, so this, you didn't answer my second question though. Who do you want to be? Oh, what's the part? Who do you want to be at home watching y'all on TV next season? <laughs> but you're gonna. I don't. I really want everybody to come back. I mean, I did feel a way about Alicia missing the reunion. I just feel like we're filming a show and everybody got shit going on. I have missed out on several gigs to like, you know, meet filming obligations or things where you know what I'm saying. Like the reunion was one of those things where I had several projects that I was trying to shuffle around and make accommodations to get there. So I just feel like in those moments, um, as a team player, as an employee of the show, mm -hmm. 
you should show up. And if you, from a technical standpoint, if she cannot meet that obligation, which is the final obligation, then I just felt like, mm, what is the value of you being a part of this group? If mm. that was just how I felt about it. If she come back, I'm not saying that the girl, you know, like I'm gonna be like, girl, you shouldn't be here. Da, 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 da. But <laughs> as of the reunion date, I just feel like, why should you continue to be in the group? But outside of that, I mean, I think everybody should come back because I think what will happen for us, it should be about the repairing of the group and how do we move forward. This year was all about the chaos and who's HBIC and what's going on. So I think next year should be about the repairing. And after y'all see what happened at the final of the reunion, yeah, we already know what we're going to have to sort out next year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it left us with a cliffhanger because... Uh... Uh, Jayla had an announcement that she did something, oh, and it and it, and it when the receipts came out. <sighs> Lord, well, well, we can't next, wait. So outside of that, so what's next for you, Andre? Like, what projects are you working on now? What can we look for next from you um, during this off season of taping for you? Um, well, I'm super excited because I just, during the whole time of this, I costume designed my first feature length film as the lead designer, and it's going to be on Lifetime. So I'm super duper okay. excited about that. Yeah. So um, I can't wait for that to come out. That was an amazing experience. It's just another milestone in my um, costume and wardrobe career. Um, so I'm super duper excited about that. I have my first magazine cover coming out which i'm super duper excited about um Congratulations. it looks phenomenal i got the mock-up of it yesterday so i'm super excited about that i'll be posting about that within the next couple days um i'm gonna release new merchandise we just designed an exclusive piece for our um for the website called the dubai robe set so you guys will see me posting and promoting that because that's the one that i specifically designed and had input about, you know, how it was going to be. So I'm super excited about that. And honestly, I just want to continue to work, you know, in this downtime, I just want to take some time and kind of re-strategize the brand of Andre. Um, prior to COVID, I had a lot of exciting things on the horizon. So I want to kind of get back into that space and figure some of those things out. Like I said before, this vacuum will suck you in and it'll kind of throw you off your game. So I'm just trying to get back on my game. Very good. We're very excited to hear it. I um, know you're going to do a phenomenal job. Can't wait to see what the robes look like. So while we're about to close out, what is what are some words of advice that you would give to other Black queer creatives who are um, like you, chasing their dream? What advice would you give from what you want? I would say, I think what I've learned through my journey is that tenacity is the biggest thing. Like you will have up years, you will have down years, you will have, you know, highs and lows for sure. But I think the reward is in staying the course. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I think we want things instantly. We want instant gratification. We, you know, we want to jump on Instagram tomorrow and be an influencer and get 1,000 likes and, you know, 2,000 comments, all of this stuff. But just stay in it because every... Um, step every action that you take is a furtherance of where you are going. Um, and moments even like this with myself and Chase in LA, no um, moment can fully define you. You can always, you know, change the course. You can always change the direction. Just don't stop going forward. All right. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Andre. Where can people find you? Follow me on Instagram, all about Andre, super modest and easy to remember, all underscore about <laughs> underscore Andre. Um, you can also shop my merchandise, shop him, shop this shop, H-E-M, like the hem of a garment. Um, and just like I always say, I put the heat in him, period. Ooh. Yeah, we love to see it. <laughs> all right, you guys can also make sure you check out um, the second part of the reunion, I'm sure it's going to be airing on Thursday on YouTube. Yes. Chasing Reality and Chasing LA Brand. You can follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Andre. So proud of you. Can't wait thank to you. Thank you. Next season. And thank you for stopping by the Darren Green Show. We thank you, guys. You. Thank you yeah. so much. I'll be back. Very good. <laughs> yes, wait. we exactly. We love to see our. Uh, guests come back um thank you guys so much for listening to the show hope you've enjoyed it hope you enjoyed the podcast and the convo and until next time i'm your host darren green i'm prince derek doll and this is the darren green show signing out all right y'all bye, bye.